So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and this is another mechanical video. It's also kind of a video of Backroads Arizona because I am installing these two relay boxes that I got off of Amazon and my new used sand rail that I got. The reason I had to buy these two relay boxes is because I wanted to relocate some of the wiring because previously on this car, all of the fuses and relays were underneath the back seats, which are a complete pain in the ass to remove. And I didn't want to break down when I'm out at the dunes and have to go through the hassle of removing a seat in order to replace a relay that had gone bad or a fuse that had blown. So right here's a picture of where the fuses and relays were previously located at on this vehicle. And I actually moved them up right behind the center console where they're very easy to get to in case I break down while I'm out riding. So in this video, I'm gonna go over how a relay works and why you would want one in your system. I'm gonna go over how I mounted both relay boxes in my sand car, along with what I am using those relays to control on the car. I'm also gonna go over some modifications you can make in different ways you can wire the relay box in to do different things depending on what you need for your application. And this video is pretty long, guys, but I did feel I had to be very thorough because I am describing how a relay works along with different ways to use it. And I guarantee you, if you are curious about how you can make these work and do what you want it to do, you will find this video helpful. I'm also gonna go over what I liked and disliked about each one of these relay boxes and how they are different. So you can figure out maybe which one you wanna use for your application. Basically at the end of this video, you should have a full understanding of how a relay box works and how you can apply it to what you're trying to accomplish. So let's get to it. So the first thing you're probably wondering is why or if I need to use a relay. The purpose of a relay is enabling you to use a low amperage control circuit such as a low amperage switch, or in my case, the Holly Terminator EFI system that I bought has control circuits for the two cooling fans coming out of the computer that cannot handle much amperage, along with a fuel pump control circuit that can only handle 15 amps. So therefore, I'm using those control circuits to operate a relay and that relay is supplying the higher amperage current that is needed to operate the cooling fans or fuel pump, for example. So here are the two relay boxes that I ended up getting off of Amazon. One was $22 and the other one was right around 50. I felt both of these boxes were made of a high quality material and were weatherproof so it would handle the elements of being in the sand car without a problem. They also both used ATO style fuses, which are the old school standard fuse, which is what I was looking for because those are still the most common and most readily available fuses. The six relay box did come with extra brackets for a multi-terrain mounting option to give you a little bit more flexibility. The smaller of the two boxes did not, I did not use that other type of bracketry because I was mounting to a flat surface. Now the one relay box that only had two relays does still have six fuses. So you have extra fuses that aren't controlling a relay. The bigger of the two had six relays and six fuses, so one fuse per relay. One thing I didn't realize till after mounting the smaller of the two relay boxes that it does use a less common relay. They are a little heavier duty. You'll notice this one is 80 amp and the ones on the six relay box were only a 30 to 40 amp, which is still usually plenty enough amperage to do what you're most likely gonna be needing and is a lot more readily available. So if looking back on this and I would have seen that, I probably would have gone in a different direction than what I ended up doing. On the six relay box, all of the wires for the input and output for poles 30 to 87 and 87A were all 12 AWG, which is a good heavy duty gauge wire for most applications. And then for your exciter wires to that relay was 16 gauge, which is not a problem for the load that that is handling. On the two relay box, the two main power wires coming in to pull 30 on the relay and supply the rest of the fuses are a metric equivalent to a 12 gauge wire, which is heavy duty. And the two yellow wires coming out on pull 87 are the same. However, you'll notice that the other wires look smaller and that's because they actually jump those down to a 14 gauge equivalent wire, which will not handle the same amount of amperage as a 12 gauge. And because of this, I did modify the way I wired in these boxes a little differently on my sand car because I did not want to use that lighter duty wire for some of the things that I wanted fused. The relays for this box also are only a four spade connector instead of a five. So they're a little less versatile as far as what you can make them do. Okay, so here is how we're gonna start explaining this relay. You have red wires coming in to the fuses and each one of those fuses powers pull 30 
on the relay, which is normally used for your power in on a standard 12 volt relay. There is different ways to use it. This is just the most common. So you'll notice each red wire is coming in going to pull 30 off of each one of the fuses. Now we're gonna go over pull 87A. 87A is the center pull on your standard 12 volt relay. When the relay does not have an exciter going to it, pull 30 will transfer through to 87A. So as it stands right now with no other wires going to it, 30, if that was a 12 volt positive, is gonna go out to 87A on each one of these relays. This is a yellow wire on the relay box that we're discussing right now. I do not have a yellow dry erase marker, so I'm using green to represent the yellow wire in this box. So now I'm gonna add in the control circuit, which is the exciter for the relay to transfer your low amperage control circuit to a high amperage output to run a device. Usually the exciter wires don't matter as far as which one you use for positive and negative. However, they did have a diagram on the Amazon webpage labeling that 85 is for the 12 volt positive and that 86 is for the ground going to the control side of that relay. So I'm gonna do a demonstration really quick showing you that usually it does not matter which side you use for positive and negative as far as the exciter on the relays. Okay, so right here um, I've got the positive on one side, either 85 or 86, I don't even know which one. Doesn't really matter, you'll hear the click. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it around. The clicking sound you are hearing is the relay getting excited by a 12 volt power and ground and transferring 30 to pull 87 on the relay. You still hear the click. So that can be ran either way. We're gonna do the same thing on the heavy duty 80 amp relay, I'll show you. Same thing. Now there is a couple different relays that do come with a diode in the relay. These tend to be more expensive, so they're not as common, and they will matter the direction of the ground and power going to the exciter depending on how the rest of the wiring is ran on that system. Same thing. And then we're gonna do it on the relay that actually came in the true mod. So that's showing you three different relays that you can see it doesn't really matter whether you have the power or ground on 85 or 86. So 86 is a black wire, which they are using for the ground as it is intended on this relay box according to their wiring diagram. As I showed you, sometimes it doesn't matter on this 85 to 86, but uh, if you're wiring it and it recommends doing it that way, obviously that's the way you wanna do it. So I have the 86 coming off of here, being the black wire, and then 85, I don't have a white dry erase marker obviously, so I'm using brown for the white, and those are coming off of here. So this would be a 12 volt exciter, and this would be a ground. When you apply the ground and the 12 volt positive to these relays, pull 30 is gonna transfer, instead of going to 87A, is gonna transfer power over to 87, and 87 is going to put power out for whatever you are trying to run off of these relays. So that's an overview of how this relay box works. So here is the six relay box, and I did modify it a little bit as well. Because the two relay box ran the 14 gauge wire and the Holly power for the computer was running a 12 gauge and the fuses on the six relay box were 12 gauge wire. I actually cut the wire going to the first relay because it was gonna be a spare anyways. And I actually just came off of it and I used that one to power my Holly computer versus using it to power the relay number one because I wasn't using it. So right here you can see where I cut the one wire and spliced it in and then capped off the other wire at the relay. I also needed a constant battery supply that was off of a fuse for my ignition switch. So I teed into the wire going to the second fuse for that purpose. So here is a quick description of how the two relay box is intended for use. You have two main power wires coming in with a good 12 gauge wire. However, they jumped off with that smaller gauge wire to these extra two fuses. And those were a 14 gauge wire coming out. So you can just use those for a fused output. Then you also have a 12 gauge wire coming from the output of this fuse that feeds pull 30 on the relays. And you have that on both sides. 
And then the yellow wires, which are 12 gauge coming out, are your outputs to supply whatever you need to run off of the relays. Now, under normal conditions, all these fuses would be a constant power supply, and that's what I wanted to avoid in my setup that I was doing. So I'm gonna show you how I modified that to make it work for my application. So right here, I'm gonna show you why I added this extra two relay box with the extra fuses. Originally on this car, there was just straight battery power going to my center console with all my switches. So if I would leave any of these switches in the on position, it would have killed my battery, which I'm not gonna lie, I do have a little bit of a bad habit of possibly leaving a switch on. So I didn't want those on a constant. I wanted everything on the center console to be working off a key on power. So that's not an option. I take the key out of the ignition. There is no way I've got to draw on my battery. So in order to do that, I had to rewire it a little bit. So here is how I ran this. So I put everything to a key on power. So instead of going directly to the power wires going to the center console, I actually ran from my circuit breaker up to pole 87. Then I came off of pole 30, which is already pre-wired in this relay box. And I came out of the fuse that is powering through there and split that off to the two main powers going to the center console. Then I grounded my pole 86 to the exciter and then I ran a key on power to 85. Now I'm actually wiring this kind of reversed. As I said, I modified it compared to its original intent to make it work so I could run key on power for all these fuses and key on power to my center console for my application. So now I'm gonna go over some demonstrations showing you how to wire in a relay and also some diagrams showing different ways that you can wire it into your system depending on the application you need. For example, wiring it in to activate a ground instead of a power. Okay, so right here we have a 12 volt battery, negative, positive, coming off the positive with a fuse to protect the circuit as close to the battery as possible. Then we're going to our switch out of our switch to our load. In this case, I'm just using a light. This could be a radiator fan. This could be a fuel pump, whatever it is you're using. Then we're coming out of that with the ground back to the battery. So simple circuit, turn the switch on. Obviously we have light and shut the switch off, whether it be an ignition switch or a toggle switch and you shut it off. So that is how a basic wiring setup for 12 volt works. Now we're gonna put the relay in. Now the purpose of the relay is if this is a heavy duty, let's say a fuel pump that was too much for the ignition to handle, then we need to add a relay to turn that low amperage control circuit from the ignition switch to something that will handle the high amperage circuit of the fuel pump. So here's how I got this same circuit ran with a basic relay. I've got main power coming off to my inline fuse to the toggle switch and then I teed off of that to pole 30 of the relay. Now you could do a lighter gauge fuse protection circuit for the control side going to your toggle switches and stuff and then run a higher amperage fuse protection off of your battery to power the relay. All depends on how you want to do that. Off of the toggle switch I'm going to the black wire because once again I said usually it doesn't matter even though they do recommend in the wiring diagram going off the white for the control power. Um, this is just how I wired this in. So I've got this going to pole 86. That's my exciter power from the toggle switch control circuit. Off of 85 going back to the ground for the relay. Out of the relay on pole 87 to my load, which is the red wire going to the light. Out of the light or load going to the black wire is also going back to ground. Okay, so right here, you'll notice you'll hear the click of the relay and the light will come on. So instead of running the power for the load off of the toggle switch, we are running a heavier duty wire off of the relay to supply more amperage to the load. So right here is that wiring diagram of the same demonstration I just showed you. I've got main power coming off with a small inline fuse to protect the control circuit going to the toggle switch. I also have a main power going through a circuit breaker to pole 30 on the relay. I have the control circuit going out from the toggle switch over to pole 85 on the relay. 
out of pole 86, which is my ground going back to the negative to the battery. And then out of pole 87 is my high amperage output to run my load. In this case, I'm just using a light. And then out of the light on the ground side going back to the battery. Flip the toggle switch. This transfers power through, which transfers power from 30 to 87 to power the light. Shut the toggle switch off, cuts the power, cuts the power to the exciter and cuts the power from 30 and actually puts it back to 87A. So let's say for example, instead of running power through the relay, you wanna run a ground for whatever reason. So right here, I've got main power going to the light or load and I'm running a ground over to pole 30 of the relay. So when I turn my toggle switch on, it transfers power through the toggle switch, excites the relay and transfers the ground through to turn on the load using a ground instead of a power through the relay. This example is showing me using a ground on the toggle switch instead of a power to excite the relay. So right here, I'm coming off the main battery power through my inline fuse protection, I'm going to pole 85, which is the exciter, and over to pole 30 on the relay. And then I have a ground running from the negative on the battery to a toggle switch, and then out of the toggle switch over to pole 86. I turn on the toggle switch, it supplies the ground to pole 86. Since I already have a constant power going to pole 85, it excites the relay, which in turn powers the light or load to turn it on. So here's another way to use this relay if you need to for a different application. Right now I am running this light or this load off of the yellow wire, which is 87A. The relay is not excited right now and it's powering this light. So as soon as I excite the relay, it's gonna shut this light off and turn on this other light that I've got on pole 87. So that's some different automation you can make it do if you need to by using the relay to do two functions off of one switch. When mounting the six relay box, it did have a rubber grommet and I used that for the pattern to mark it out so I knew where to cut. I used a grinder with a cutoff wheel in order to make the main part of the cuts and then I finished it off using a jigsaw for the edges. Once getting the main piece cut out, then I set the relay box in place so I could mark my holes and went ahead and drilled those out. So originally I thought I was only going to need this six relay box to do everything I needed. However, I did end up modifying the Holly Terminator X harness and moving some of the relays and fuses for those up into that center console as well. Once again, because I didn't want any fuses or relays in a pain in the ass spot to get to in case I was out riding and something failed which is when I decided to get that second relay box and then I just cut it out the same way I did this one and mounted them side by side. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. There will be many more videos to come. I did purchase a long block LS3 engine and everything else that you see on this engine right now, I will have videos coming up for that, including the installation of the Holley Terminator X EFI fuel system with the programming. Right now I'm kind of struggling to get the videos done because I am trying to get this thing ready for dune season, but they will be coming. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good information. If so, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. The whole concept of my channel is to give you guys the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. And I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.